या देवी सर्वभूतेशु शक्ति रूपेण संस्था नमस्त 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 नमो नम सैल्यूटेशन टू अमेन हु इज दोम ऑफ पेशेंस इंटेलेक्ट पावर एंड कंपैशन एंड फिलोसफी has always revered women ma sita taught us patience ma parvati taught us motherhood ma urmila taught us sacrifice ma draupadi taught us to fight for the right is cause and yet for centuries we have denied women the right to have a voice to speak to study to work and the right to a dignified life it took centuries for us to create a society where we finally understand the need for equality and the rights of women the issue of women's right to sexual health and choices and physical well-being has always been a talking point for the movement right activists and lawyers the issue has been neglected in most of the society all over the world due to various reasons such as cultural social economic and political traditionally indian society has been patriarchal and male dominated and conventionally the role of women has been to manage the home and bear children women hardly had any say in making decisions relating to bearing and number of children thus the issue of women's sexual health is contemporary and crucial the one day journey that we are about to embark on is an effort to address a long ignored issue that not only has a direct impact on the well-being of the doctors of our country but poses a tiring challenge to our progress as a society good morning ladies and gentlemen and distinguished dignitaries present here shrimati rekha sharma ma honorable chairperson national commission for women government of india delhi as our chief guest dr nitin nagarkar sir director all india institute of medical sciences raipur as a guest of honor dr vc vivekanandan sir honorable vice chancellor hnu Professor Dr. Uday Shankar Sir, Registrar H N L U. Dr. Parvesh Kumar Rajput, Assistant Professor and Organizing Secretary of the Seminar. Dr. Komodi Chhala, Associate Professor and Convener of the Seminar. Other reverend guests of the days, I Shubham Jindal and I Shambhavi Shami. Welcome you to the inaugural function of the One Day National Seminar on Rights of Women to Sexual Health and Choices, a Jurisprudential Conundrum. organized by the Hyderabad National Law University Raipur in collaboration with the National Commission for Women Delhi Shubham Karoti Kalyana Arogyam Dana Sampada Dusht Buddhi Vinashaya Deepak Jyoti Namostute Before we begin the program let us invoke the blessings of the almighty by lighting the lamp I would now like to invite the honorable dignitaries present here to come and please light the diya to commemorate the commencement of the inaugural function
Thank you, respected dignitaries. Now that the radiance of the light and shlokas has truly purified the milieu, I believe that every small step counts towards protecting our planet and that it is essential to take responsibility for our actions following which we have decided to go green and play our part in helping the environment. Therefore, we shall be honoring our guests with a sapling as a symbol of our commitment to environmental sustainability. These green souvenirs serve as a symbol of our appreciation for our guests and our shared responsibility to protect the environment. May I now request our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, to present our Honorable Chief Guest, Srimati Rekha Sharma, ma'am, Honorable Chairperson, National Commission for Women, with a sapling as a token of her warmth and reverence. Thank you, sir. May I now request our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, to accord the green souvenir to our guest of honor, Dr. Nitin Nagarkar, sir, Director, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Raipur. Thank you, sir. May I now request Professor Dr. Uday Shankar, Sir Rajasra H. Nayu, to present Professor Dr. V.C. Vivekanandan, sir, with a sapling. Thank you, sir. May I now request Dr. Deepak Kumar Shivastav, sir, to present Professor Dr. Uday Shankar, sir, with a sapling. Thank you, sir. May I now request Mr. Anand Kishore, student convener, to present Dr. Parvesh Kumar Rajpur, assistant professor and organizing secretary of the seminar, Mr. Sapir. Thank you, Anand. May I now request Ms. Sri Radha Roy Chaudhary to present Dr. Komadi Channa, Associate Professor and Convener of the Seminar with the same thing. Thank you, Shirada. We have with us our Honorable Registrar, Professor Dr. Uday Shankar, sir. Sir was previously associated with the Rajiv Gandhi School of Intellectual Property Law at IIT Kharagpur and was also the founding faculty of HNLU in the year 2003. Sir has been teaching and researching in law for more than 18 years. He has served as a guest professor under the Magdalene Scotch Fellowship awarded by the Fellow Faculty of Law University of Hamburg in the year 2016 and recipient of the prestigious fellowship from the Max Planck Institute of Comparative Public Law and International Law, Heidelberg in the year 2008. Professor Dr. Uday Shankar holds a PhD degree from the Delhi Law Faculty and specializes in the field of public law and constitutional law. May I now request our registrar sir to kindly deliver the welcome address. Thank you. Good morning to all of you. Greetings on behalf of the Radullah National Law University. Dharma Sanstha Panathan translates to for the sake of establishing the privacy of the laws of eternal values, which is the motto of the university. In pursuance to the motto, the university conducts academic programs with the aim to deliberate and discourse on the strengthening of law and legal system in the country. This seminar is one such academic initiative 
to provide a platform to the experts and learners of the rights of women. They are going to engage on various themes on sexual health of women. As a part of ceremonial protocol, I humbly accept the responsibility of delivering a welcome address on behalf of the organizing committee. On behalf of the university and the organizing committee, I take this opportunity to extend gratitude to Honorable Chairperson, National Commission for Women, Madam Rekha Saramaji, for agreeing to be the chief guest to the inaugural segment of the one day seminar on rights of women to sexual health and choices, a jurisprudential common group. Honorable Chairperson is credited with making the phenomenal presence of the commission in the life of women. Madam, your motivating leadership will certainly encourage the participants to embrace and promote the vision of the commission. Welcome to the University Honorable Chairperson. Madam, I humbly place a note of appreciation to the commission for consent to collaborate with the university in organizing this seminar. Thanks for your support. We look forward to working with the commission in future also. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Nitin Nagarakar, Director M. Sraibur, guest of honor of the event. Sir, the intersection of science, technology, and law is a newer area of interest among the students of law, and your presence in seminar will give us insights into interdisciplinary studies. Sir, welcome you to the university and the seminar. I'm pleased to welcome Honorable Vice Chancellor, Mr. V.C. Vivekananda, to the inaugural ceremony. Ceremony. Sir, the organizing committee has immensely benefited from your guidance to organize the seminar, especially extending the invite to the Honorable Chairperson of NCW. Welcome you again, sir. Thank you for blessing this occasion. I also welcome the organizing secretary, Professor Parvesh Rajpur, and convener, Professor Kamodi Challa, and the other conveners, Professor Rachana Garoche and Professor Spreena Ryan Lastly, I welcome the deans, faculty colleagues, staff, resource persons and students of our university and students from the universities from nearby places. Thank you. Over to you at the end. Thank you, sir, for your kind words. HLU has touched numerous milestones under the able guidance of our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. V.C. Vivekanandan, sir. Professor Dr. V.C. Vivekanandan, sir, has three decades of teaching and research experience in legal education and served NRS Bangalore and Nalsar Hyderabad between 1990 to 2017. He also was the dean at Rajiv Gandhi School of IP Law at IIT Kharagpur between 2009-2010 and was the founding dean of School of Law at Bennett University in Greater Noida during 2007-2019. to He holds a bachelor's degree, master's degree, and PhD degree in law, apart from a master's and MPhil degree in public administration. Professor Vivekanandan sir was appointed as the MHRD chair professor in 2008-2009 and again from 2010-2017. During this tenure, he was also representing Government of India negotiation in SCCR meets at Geneva as an official delegate from 2013-2015. Sir, we are honored to have you as a vice chancellor. We request you to kindly enlighten us with your words. The chief guest of today's seminar, Srimati Rekha Sharma. Honorable Chairperson, National Commission for Women, Government of India, New Delhi. Guest of Honor, Dr. Nitin Nagarkar, Director, Ames Raipu, Registrar, my colleagues and students of HNLU and participating students from other law schools and other distinguished guests. Today's seminar, is in my understanding is first of its kind initiated from HNLU, which is of very crucial importance. In many countries, women face significant obstacles to accessing sexual and reproductive health services. Religious, cultural, and social norms often contribute to discriminatory practices that perpetuate gender inequality. Additionally, the cost of services can be prohibitive, 
particularly for the marginalized communities. There is also a significant lack of comprehensive sex education for many girls and women. Without accurate information about sex, contraception, and reproductive health, women are left vulnerable to unwanted pregnancies, sexually transmitted infections, and even violence. Furthermore, while access to safe and legal abortion services has improved in some parts of the world, many women still face significant barriers. Restrictive policies and laws, conservative cultural attitudes, and limited availability of services mean that women may resort to unsafe methods of abortion, putting their lives at risk. The Office of the High Commissioner of the United Nations, in its report, talks about women's sexual and reproductive health as related to multiple human rights, including the right to life, the right to be free from torture, the right to health, the right to privacy, the right to education, and prohibition of discrimination. The Committee of Social, Economic, and Cultural Rights, CESCR, and the Committee on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, popularly called CEDAW, have both clearly indicated that women's right to health includes their sexual and reproductive health. This means the states have obligation to respect, protect, and fulfill the rights related to women's sexual and reproductive health. The special rapport here on the right to health contains that women are entitled to reproductive health where the facility should be available in adequate numbers, it should be accessible physically and economically, it should be accessible without discrimination, and it should be of good quality. So, in that context, various articles of CEDAW, Article 16, Article 10, also apart from that, the Binding Platform for Action have recommended many things, which in our opinion is a beginning, but a long way to go. It is in this context, today's seminar assumes a great importance. As I was reading our chairperson for today's program and chief guest, he did comment that it is a very significant and bold initiative of a seminar, which is quite happy to participate. And as a person who is very vocal about women's rights in the country, it is our honor to have her today as the chief guest and, and also one of the premier institute aims, uh, you know, director being here, adds a lot of value. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome all the speakers who have come for today's seminar and also place my appreciation to my colleagues who have taken great pains and efforts to put this uh, seminar in, in, in practice today. So I thank the organizers for also giving me a little time to give my opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for highlighting the significance of today's seminar and for your kind words. We have amidst us Dr. Parvesh Kumar Rajput, an esteemed organizing secretary for this conference. Dr. Rajput is a highly educated and accomplished individual with an extensive background in law and criminal justice. Sir holds a Bachelor's of Arts Honours degree in Political Science from Delhi University, as well as an LLB and LLM from CCS University and a PhD from Punjab University. Sir has also been awarded the Doctor Research Fellowship by ICSSR Delhi during his PhD. Dr. Rajput is currently teaching criminal laws and his research interests include human rights and constitutional law. As an organizing secretary, Dr. Rajput has worked tirelessly to ensure the success of this seminar. His dedication, expertise, and attention to detail have been invaluable in bringing together the diverse range of speakers and participants. May I do request so to kindly give an introduction of the program. My thanks to Honorable Chief Guest Srimati Rekha Sharmaji, Chair for National Commission for Women, for the gracious support and time for this event. I also thank Dr. Nidhi Nagar, Dr. Director James Rifle, for spending his valuable time for us. My thanks to Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. Christy Vivekanandan, sir, for the guidance and mentorship. Thanks to Professor Dr. Deshantar Sir, the Registrar of Veterinary, for the directions and his constant encouragement. I thank Dr. Bhavadi Shalla, Associate Professor and Governor of the Seminar, 
for extending her support in organizing this seminar. Respected faculty members, participants, my dear students, it is my pleasure to welcome you all to the one day national seminar in the collaboration with National Commission of Women on the topic of rights of women to sexual health and choices are generation Our seminar provides a unique and significant opportunity for academicians, professionals, and research scholars to engage in the scholarly discourse that centers on one of the most sensitive and the complex issues faced by women worldwide. Their sexual health and choices. In this background, we are deeply grateful to the National Commission for Women for their unwavering support for this seminar. Their commitment to promoting gender equality and women's empowerment is reflected in their support of this seminar. Though the issues of women's rights to sexual health and choices and the physical well-being has always been a point of discussion for human rights activists and lawyers, this issue has always been neglected in most of the societies and has not received attention and importance which it deserves. The reasons for such neglect are varied, such as social, cultural, religious, economic, and sometimes political. Moreover, in a patriarchal and male-dominated society, the role of a woman has been to manage to home and children, and they are often denied the right to express themselves. The seminar objective is to deliberate upon the significant issues related to the women's sexual and their choices, aiming to provide pragmatic solutions for resolving conflictive issues and protecting women's rights to sexual health and well-being. We have received more than 250 abstracts for this seminar from all parts of the country, out of which 75 abstracts have been selected for presentation. Seminar has consisting of six technical sessions in hybrid mode. The various themes of the seminar provide an opportunity to explore the juridical aspect of these issues, which is essential for understanding the legal and policy framework that can address the challenges faced by women in exercising their rights. The themes of a seminar include maternal and reproductive health of women, sexual health, women's rights, emerging issues in women's sexual health, and social cultural practices and challenges. The program has live streaming in our official YouTube channel. These themes represent crucial areas of concern that impact the lives of a woman across the globe. As a clinician and research scholar, we must recognize the significance of these issues and engage in meaningful discourse that can drive positive change for women's sexual health and choices. Once again, we thank the National Commission for Women for their support and command. Their effort is promoting gender equality and women empowerment. The program has as I already said, it's a uh, live streaming in our official YouTube channel. So now my address would not be completed if I'm not recognizing the tireless effort made by faculty and student coordinator coming from coordinators. We hope that this seminar contributes to a deeper understanding of the challenges faced by the movement and enable us to develop pragmatic solutions that can safeguard their rights to sexual health and family. Thank you all for your presence today. Thank you. Thank you, Sir, for giving us crucial insights into this seminar and highlighting the taboo created by the issue of women's sexual health. It is our pleasure to introduce the August gathering to our guest of honor, Dr. Nitin Nagarkar, Sir, Director, Ames Rye. Sir is a distinguished medical professional with a wealth of experience and knowledge in the field of ENT. Dr. Nagarkar, Sir, received his MBBS from Patna University in 1987 where he earned honors in anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, and forensic medicine in his final examinations. He went on to complete his MS in ENT at PGI MER Chandigarh in 1992 and his DNB in ENT from the National Board of Examinations, New Delhi in 1993. Dr. Nagarkar sir has also undergone specialized training in the United Kingdom through the Overseas Doctors Training Scheme of the Royal College of Surgeons of England, where he tried training at Prince Charles Hospital, South Wales, from 1999 to 2000. Throughout his career, Dr. Nagarkar sir has made significant contributions to the field of ENT and his expertise is widely recognized. In 2011, he attended the SARC ENT Congress in Kathmandu, where he delivered a guest lecture on our experience in management of salivary gland tumors during the scientific deliberation. 
His exceptional work has also earned him Distinguished Service Award by the Delhi Medical Association on Doctors' Day 2006. Given his extensive knowledge and expertise in the field of ENT, we are honored to have Dr. Nagar Sir join us today at our inaugural ceremony. We extend a warmest welcome to Dr. Nagar Sir and look forward to his words of wisdom with great anticipation. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everybody, and thanks very much for the kind uh, introduction. Warm welcome to everybody for this uh, one day seminar The Rights of Women to Sexual Health and Choices, Arjunis uh, Provision Shape Gone Trump. Warm welcome to Madam Shrimati Rekha Sharma, the Honorable Chairperson of the National Commission for Women, Government of uh, India. And it's very nice that they are the collaborating in this particular workshop here. Uh, thanks very much uh, for the invitation to, given to me by Professor P.C. Uh, Vivekanandan, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of this university, uh, Professor Uday Shankar Registrar, HNLU, Dr. Parvish Kumar Rajputi, who just heard him, who told about the outline of this particular workshop, Dr. Kamadi Chella, who is the coordinator for this program, faculty members, support staff, and all the staff and teachers here, and of course, the invited guests and my dear students. So thank you very much. This is a very, very important topic uh, here for discussion today. And I think that um, as I was discussing with the uh, Honorable uh, Chief Guest Madam and the VC Sir, that it is one of those topics which touches the uh, medical aspects, the medical experts, as well as the legal aspects, the legal experts whoever are here today. And it brings stakeholders on one platform because these are topics which as has been very rightly mentioned in the introductory remarks, that with the change in the social cultural practices, economics of the state, and of course the aspirations of the public, the societal values, many things change with time. Ours is a very large country with a very diverse population. And uh, although we do uh, recognize in our country the woman Shakti, definitely sometimes there are difficulties in accessing health, at least in the remote parts of the country. But the, the things have changed and things have been improving over the last uh, few decades, no doubt about it. Uh, I'm happy that today the topics won't be touching on maternal health, which is again very, very important. And the government India has been focusing on maternal and child health at all times because improving maternal health is going to improve the, the health of the population in, in, in times to come. Similarly, the reproductive health. There are so many medical issues and legal issues related to reproductive health, and I'm happy that uh, that's going to be discussed today. International aspects, because there are so many international laws, and gradually we also look at how they have adopted in their society and whether we have adopted any changes or any positives which we can take out of that. Uh, of course, abortion is another very important aspect, the laws related to abortion, because again, that decides the health of the mother, the health of the unborn child. Many aspects are covered in that. Marital rape again has been a topic of discussion. I'm sure that there will be a few, few topics discussed on that. Age of consent for sex again or reproduction, that's important. The rights of sex workers, that's again very, very important because they also have their own right to, to improvement of their health and rights to be taken care of. LGBT is again something which came up from the West when gradually in our country also. There's a lot of awareness and I'm sure it's times to come their rights are being uh, explored and, and, and we will do positive, uh, for, uh, you know, health for them also. Surrogacy and assisted and productive is one more topic which is very important. And uh, the law again has to be in, in line with the expectations of the women and protecting the rights of the women at the same time when we talk about surrogacy. Social cultural practices are something which are bound to change. Our country is also undergoing a lot of changes. Uh, you have the metropolitan cities which are more westernized and you've got more conservative parts of the country also. So it's a diverse population and we have to cater to the needs of all of them at the same time. So I think most of the topics which are being covered in one day would have their own medical aspects, would have their own legal aspects. There are so many things which if you see the last five years, the law has changed. Uh, new medical devices, new medical technologies have come up. Maybe about 20 years ago, nobody would have thought of surrogacy. Today, it's a, it's a very important topic that's being discussed here. So I think uh, as times would change, 
we would need to adapt, we would need to change, and uh, I'm sure that we'll get to hear the pearls of wisdom from Madam in this particular regard on, on how the, the rights of the women are and how, how they are to be protected. Uh, I was discussing with uh, Professor Vivekananda just in the morning that I think we should work together, the medical experts and the legal experts, so that you know we can have common lectures, common topics for discussion, common projects, which I think we each can contribute much more to the society and academics as well. Uh, I'm sure that this particular uh, platform, which is there, the hybrid mode, uh, so many people are interested, and I was very keen to hear that 75 papers have been taken up for uh, the grade in this particular seminar, most to show the interest. It's a very new topic, and I'm sure that it will lead to a lot of interest, a lot of discussions. And again, I thank the organizers for bringing on one platform, stakeholders and experts of, 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 coming from different walks of life. And my special thanks to Madam. Uh, uh, I would like to mention that uh, she's a very well-known speaker. Everybody wants uh, that she should come and you know uh, grace the occasion. I know that uh, she has extensive traveling to do. But thank you very much that uh, Madam, you are here, and we would really like to hear from you. And uh, whatever aims uh, and law universities would work together on one platform, we are always welcome, sir. And again, I say that Raipur or Chhattisgarh is very lucky. Some of our top institutions, national institutions, are all over here. So I think we can surely work together and, you know, whatever the Prime Minister's dream, we can achieve of a rapidly developing nation and making India a superpower with the contribution from the state. Thank you, sir. As a matter of fact, today's seminar will witness extensive discussions of the significant issues highlighted by you, sir. We are privileged to have amidst us the chief guest for our opening ceremony. Ms. Rekha Sharma, ma'am, Honorable Chairperson of the National Commission for Women, Government of India, Delhi, has graciously accepted our invitation to be with us here today. If one takes a closer look at her style of working, the two distinct virtues that define her are leadership spirit and relentless will to keep doing good for women in need. Ma'am, we request you to kindly enlighten us with your words. Namaskar, good morning. Professor Dr. V. C. Pentata Nandan, Honorable Vice Chancellor, HNNU, Dr. Nitin Nagarkar, Director, AIMS, dignitaries on the stage, students, faculty members, and other staff members of the university. First of all, let me thank HNNU that they have chosen a very progressive subject. I would have, uh, to, I wanted to see more students on in the in the audi, uh, auditorium because this topic is for you people, not for the people on the stage. And I think more people need to discuss all those things which are today you are going to cover uh, in today's uh, one day, one day, is it one day, one day seminar. Yeah, so uh, the topic which is uh, rights of women to sexual health and choices. When we are still struggling for common human rights, especially women of the world, we are now talking about rights of women to sexual health and choices. This is great topic. And I must applaud the uh, college for this, the school for this, because women need to talk about their rights now. This is the time when we are saying that country is moving from women empowerment to women-led empowerment, and still we don't have our human rights. So this is the time that we should talk about it. We, we should snatch our rights. I'm saying snatch word because we can't wait more. We cannot wait more. We have already passed so many years. When our country, they are saying that a woman is a devi. Aurat ko devi ki tarah poochte hai, pedestal par bithate hai, lekin rights nahi dete, human rights nahi dete. So this is the time we should talk about rights. And then we are talking about reproductive, reproductive uh, health or choices. It should start very early. It should start from the childhood, I can say. When we enter in our teenage, 
do our children and do our parents or even schools talk about sex, safe sex education? It is a still a taboo that we don't talk about safe sex. We don't even tell our students or our daughters or our sons how to practice safe sex. Sex is a big taboo, and especially for girls. लड़कियां तो बात नहीं कर सकती हैं क्या पेरेंट्स से बात करना आज भी मुश्किल है कि सेक्स के बारे में कैसे क्वेश्चन करें कौन सी मदर्स हैं जो बात करती हैं या फादर्स डॉटर से बात कर सकते हैं हाउ मेनी गर्ल्स कैन टॉक अबाउट देयर मेंस्ट्रुएशन पेन्स टू देयर फादर्स यस दे दे विल कंप्लेन टू देयर मदर्स बट स्टिल दे कांट से दैट पापा अकेले ने पैड्स खत्म हो गए लेके आना जरा आज भी अब ब्रदर्स को नहीं कहते आज भी शॉपकीपर ब्लैक पॉलिथिन में रैप करके देता है इट इज लाइक वी आर स्मगलिंग समथिंग फ्रॉम द शॉप एंड पीपल पीपल डोंट नो व्हाट इज द व्हाट आर द व्हाट इज द मेंस्ट्रुएशन व्हाट व्हाट आर दीस पैड्स फॉर व्हाई सो मच हशश अराउंड आवर हेल्थ एंड प्रोडक्टिव चॉइसेस व्हेन आई एम सेइंग दैट वी डोंट इवन Tell them sex rights, or how can we talk about uh, the age of consent? I think the age of consent, when we are talking about age of marriage, should be increased in India, and it is rightly so. A girl is not unequal. It, we say that we have equal rights. So why the age of marriage? For boys is twenty one, and why girls should be married at eighteen? She also needs more time to get prepared for life. She also has health hazards to produce children. Why she should get married at eighteen and produce a child at nineteen? So yes, the age should be increased for marriage. She should have more time to study. She should have time to get uh, a job to stand on her own feet. I actually girls don't even get married at twenty one. These days they are getting married. Who are in education? They are eight twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. And marriage is as it is is not the priority and should not be the priority for anybody, boys or girls. Your life is in your hand, and you should prioritize according to your choices. Uh, but consent age should be decreased in my view, though it is going to be a uh, problematic uh, statement for many but we all know that sexual age is now decreasing children are practicing sex at 15 16 and 18 and then they go uh, they are especially boys are treated like uh, culprits but whereas girls and boys they consent for it so when we are saying yeah, age should be decreased maybe 60 because all over you have so many um, there there is internet there are movies and you watch all kinds of stuff and we are growing mentally also it is not 70 60s where people should didn't know what is sex they didn't know and and families also didn't know and, and there are no not said many uh, ways to Watch all those content on the media. So now you have everything on in books, on internet, on your phone. So why not consent? Age should be decreased. That is one part you can you all can discuss. Especially children should participate in this. When we have these kinds of pro programs, I think participation should be from both the sides. Not that कि यहाँ पे बोल के चले गए और इनको भी इनका भी नहीं जाना. Especially students का भी जानना बहुत जरूरी है इसमें and when the papers are being prepared, your view should be included in that. We are talking of, about maternal health. बहुत ज्यादा जरूरी है कि हम बात बात करें हमारे यहाँ प्राइम मिनिस्टर ने बहुत सारी स्कीम्स चलाई हैं स्पेशली मातृत्व वंदना योजना विच इज फॉर द पुअर वुमन टू गेट एक्स्ट्रा पेमेंट फॉर दो Months when she is pregnant, she can have special meals, and that is being paid by the government directly in their in their accounts. Uh, so uh, when the government is giving, and let me tell you, our laws are more pro progressive even 
than America. And you have seen recently in America how women are struggling to have right to uh, get their pregnancy, which they don't want, terminated. Uh, I think that is very, very silly that all the American states are putting to an end of their of the choice of women. Termination pregnancy if they don't want to have a child. So when we are talking about that India uh, and social society of India need to change, we can see how America it is, it is, I think the wheel is changing. The America was here. Now it is slowly going down and India is coming up in every sphere. So we are, then somebody is clapping, clapping and rightly so. We should clap for our country. Many times we do criticize and I'm the one of, uh, I'm one of the critique of many social, social problems in India. But when it's good, we should also appreciate it. Before age deep, uh, we termination, medical termination, we terminate in 20 weeks. Now, we can terminate in 20 weeks medically. And if there is a health problem, a lady or a fetus, we can later we terminate in pregnancy. Ko. And it, is, it, it depends on the woman. But do we pregnant to be pregnant or not? This is a very big part. क्या हमारी सिर्फ अस्तित्व मां बनने के ऊपर है यह बहुत बड़ी बात है हमें महिलाओं को मोस्टली मां का रूप दिया जाता है कि मां है बट इफ अ लेडी डजंट वांट टू बिकम अ मदर इज शी लेसर वुमन शी इज नॉट सो वेदर शी वांट्स टू हैव अ चाइल्ड शी डजंट वांट टू हैव अ चाइल्ड शी वांट्स टू हैव अ वन चाइल्ड ओनली और शी वांट्स टू हैव टू और मो बी नियरली मे बी थ्री but what the pressure is that male child will be born. And if you have two daughters, third will be born. If you have a girl, then you will be born. Because you should be born. That will change our society. When girls have equal opportunity to earn, they, I think they are the ones who are also supporting their parents. Things need to change. Earlier it was like, it is the responsibility of a boy to take care of the parents. Now, even the Supreme Court said that girls have equal responsibility to take care of the children. When we are giving equal rights in property, in the sh uh, property share of the parents, we should also share our responsibility with our brothers. And we should not put all the pressure on male child to have all the responsibility. That is also, uh, I think, we are empowering ourselves if we are taking care of our uh, parents. And again, I will say that uh, male child or boys or men also should take care of their ch children the way a woman is taking care of the children. So there also the responsibility should be shared, not putting on every responsibility to mother only, to look after the children. Uh, because we want equal society, we are talking about equal society, and that equality has to start from their home, from our home, from my home, and that's why, and that's how the society will change. Marital rape is a very, very big topic, and I would have listened to the students what are their views. It is, it is, but how to prove it? That we need to discuss. There are false cases also in society, and we know that marital rape does exist. Men here don't listen, no. When they don't listen out of marriage, shadi to unke liye right ho jata hai to have sex. Ye maine shadi ki hai to kaise main na kisi keh sakti hai tu? Oh, wife ko they think that they have got to have sex all the time, which should not be there. A no is a no, whether it is out of marriage or is in marriage. But how to prove it? Usko kaise prove kiya jaye? Wo baat badi mushkil hai. Kya hum husbands ko har baar court mein leke jaye? Ya unko saja dilaye? Wo kare ya unka mindset change kare? Awareness programs kare? Better hai ki hum awareness programs kare aur mindset change kare society. And they should listen to the no. 
or no is a no. That should be there, whether it is marriage or out of marriage. Surrogacy, again, we have changed the laws and you should go through, uh, through the new laws. You are the lawyers, future lawyers, and you must be knowing what are the new surrogacy laws. Earlier, a woman's womb was used for people outside who can give her money and make her a factory of children. Now, the things have changed and outsiders cannot come. Even uh, people from India cannot hire a person for this. Hiring is not allowed now. Within the family, they can have a surrogate mother. And again, it's, it's the, the discussion is going on whether the new laws are better or the old laws were, uh, old laws for good. So we need to discuss these things because your report should go out and come to NCW and we, sh we should send it to the uh, ministry, law ministry. We need to discuss because uh, laws are always evolving. Society is changing and our law should also change according to the society. And you people are the one who will discuss this and how to change. You are the future of India. When I'm saying... Uh, I'm talking about state and, and one of the speakers uh, talked about state has given, uh, state should give the rights and state has already given rights to women. But it is the society which needs to change according to the time and it hasn't changed yet. Yes, few families who are educated have changed, have given their uh, children right education, but See the lower strata of the society. We need to handhold them. You people should go to the villages, work there. When you have spare time, I would like to request VC also to send you to the nearby villages, and you may have some points for working in the society. Maybe ten uh, marks if you are going out and working for the villagers. Just tell women in the villages their rights women's rights, they should know what are their rights. They don't even know that the domestic violence exists. What to talk about the sexual rights? So you people should go out, work with them. I think then only the society will change. We cannot sit on our pedestals and say that society is changing. We cannot only make our destination that we should have one CR per annum. No, that is not. First, we have to have good human beings, and then we can have a better uh, society in, the, in our uh, country and around the world. So I want this next generation to be progressive, to be soft-hearted, uh, not only thinking from here, think from here also. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. As we break the shackles of the conversation, we cannot fail in our duty to express our gratefulness to your leadership, tireless efforts and dedication to serve the country by fighting for the rights of women, motivating them to snatch their rights, not ours. Thank you. Today, we are proud to launch the abstract book on this important topic. The book features contributions from some of the leading thinkers and experts in the field including jurists, scholars, and activists. It is a comprehensive guide to the legal and ethical issues surrounding women's rights to sexual health and choices, and we believe it will be an invaluable resource for anyone interested in this important topic. May I now request the dignitaries to kindly release the abstract book. Respected dignitaries, we are honored to have you with us today and appreciate your presence 
at this event. To mark her gratitude, may I now request our Honorable Vice Chancellor Sir to present the Honorable Chief Guest for me. We will be Rekha Sharma Ma'am, Honorable Chairperson, National Commission for Women, with a memento as a token of her reverence. Thank you, sir. May I now request an honorable vice chancellor, sir, to accord the memento to our guest of honor, Dr. Nitin Nagarkar, sir, director, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Raipur. Thank you, sir. It gives me Great pleasure to introduce Dr. Komodi Channa, an esteemed associate professor and convener of this seminar. Ma'am has extensive research in the fields of jurisprudence, environment, and administrative law. As convener of this seminar, may I now request Ma'am to kindly deliver the vote of thanks. A very good morning to all of you. Honorable dignitaries on the guys, distinguished guests in the audience, faculty members, staff, resource persons, Participants who have come from across the country, media personals, and my dear students. It is a proud privilege for me to present the vote of thanks for this one day national seminar on rights of women to sexual health and choices, a jurisprudential conundrum, being organized by Hidaytullah National Law University, Raipur, in collaboration with National Commission for Women, Delhi. At the outset, I express my sincere gratitude to our chief guest for the inaugural ceremony, Srimati Rekha Sharma, Madam, Honorable Chairperson, National Commission for Women Delhi. Ma'am, I thank you for sparing your valuable time from your busy schedule and accepting our invitation. This one day national seminar is being organized by HNLU in collaboration with National Commission for Women and the entire HNLU fraternity feels honored and privileged by your gracious presence. We look forward to such collaborations in future also. I extend my sincere thanks to our guest of honor for the inaugural ceremony, Dr. Nitin Nagarkar, Director, All India Institute of Medical Sciences. Sir, I'm thankful to you for carving out time from your busy schedule and gracing the function. I express my gratitude to the Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. B.C. Vivekanandan, sir, an academician par excellence and a great visionary. So I'm thankful to you for the inspiration and guidance given for organizing this seminar. I extend my sincere thanks to Professor Dr. Uday Shankar, Registrar at HNLU, for the valuable inputs and guidance given for organizing this seminar successfully. I acknowledge the dedication and commitment of Dr. Parvesh Kumar Rajput, the organizing secretary of the seminar, in getting the proposal approval from National Commission for Women Delhi and meticulous planning and organization of this seminar. I express my sincere thanks to all the faculty members, the staff, IT academic estate section for the cooperation in the organization of this event. I'm thankful to each and every participant and the esteemed resource persons who have come from across the country to participate in the deliberations. I thank the institutions, Kalinga University and ITM University for their participation. I acknowledge the hard work, zeal, and dedication of the faculty organizing committee, Dr. Arjuna Garoti, Dr. Eritrea Roy, and Mr. Surya Narayan Raju, the student convener, Sri Radha and Anand Kishore, and each and every student of the organizing committee for their participation in the successful organization of the seminar. Due to paucity of time, it's not possible for me to date each and every name. I thank the computers, Shubham Jindal and Shamil Vishani, for conducting beautifully this inaugural ceremony. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. As we come to the end of the inaugural function for the seminar, I call upon everyone to rise for the national anthem. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. We request everyone to proceed for the table. Thank you. 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 Thank